finds it as a persisting latent structure of hostile beliefs towards Jews as a collective manifested in individuals and attitudes, and in culture as myth, ideology, folklore, and imagery, and in actions social or legal discrimination, political mobilization against the Jews, and collective or state violence which results in and forward slash or is designed to distance, displace, or destroy Jews as Jews. 57. Elaborating on Thane's definition, Diaz Bering of the University of Cologne writes that, to antisemites Jews are not only partially but totally bad by nature, that is, their bad traits are incorrigible. Because of this bad nature, 1. Jews have to be seen not as individuals but as a collective. 2. Jews remain essentially alien in the surrounding societies. 3. Jews bring disaster on their host societies or on the whole world. They are doing it secretly, therefore the antisemites feel obliged to unmask the conspiratorial, bad Jewish character. 58. For Sonia Weinberg, as distinct from economic and religious anti-Judaism, antisemitism in its modern forms house conceptual innovation, a resort to science to defend itself, new functional forms and organizational differences. It was anti-liberal, racialist and nationalist. It promoted the myth that Jews conspired to Judaize the world, it served to consolidate social identity, it channeled dissatisfactions among victims of the capitalist system, and it was used as a conservative cultural code to fight emancipation and liberalism. 56. 1819 Bernard Lewis defined antisemitism as a special case of prejudice, hatred, or persecution directed against people who are in some way different from the rest. According to Lewis, antisemitism is marked by two distinct features, Jews are judged according to a standard different from that applied to others, and they are reactors of cosmic evil. Thus. It is perfectly possible to hate and even to persecute Jews without necessarily being anti-Semitic unless this hatred or persecution displays one of the two features specific to anti-Semitism. 59. There have been a number of efforts by international and governmental bodies to define anti-Semitism formally. The United States Department of State states that while there is no universally accepted definition, there is a generally clear understanding of what the term encompasses. For the purposes of its 2005 report on global antisemitism, the term was considered to mean hatred toward Jews individually and as a group that can be attributed to the Jewish religion and forward slash or ethnicity. 60. In 2005, the European Monitoring Center on Racism and Xenophobia, now the Fundamental Rights Agency, then an agency of the European Union, developed a more detailed working definition, which states, antisemitism is a certain perception of Jews, which may be expressed as hatred toward Jews. Rhetorical and physical manifestations of antisemitism are directed toward Jewish or non-Jewish individuals. A caricature by C. Lendra, France 1898 showing Rothschild with fueled in his hand sound forward slash or their property, toward Jewish community institutions and religious facilities. It also adds that such manifestations could also target the state of Israel, conceived as a Jewish collectivity but that criticism of Israel similar to that leveled against any other country cannot be regarded as anti-Semitic. 61. It provides contemporary examples of ways in which antisemitism may manifest itself, including promoting the harming of Jews in the name of an ideology or religion, promoting negative stereotypes of Jews, holding Jews collectively responsible for the actions of an individual Jewish person or group, denying the Holocaust or accusing Jews or Israel of exaggerating it and accusing Jews of dual loyalty or a greater allegiance to Israel than their own country. It also lists ways in which attacking Israel could be anti-Semitic, and states that denying the Jewish people their right to self-determination, for example by claiming that the existence of the state of Israel is a racist endeavor, K. 
who be a manifestation of anti-Semitism as can applying double standards by requiring of Israel a behavior not expected or demanded of any other democratic nation, or holding Jews collectively responsible for the actions of the State of Israel. 61. The definition wrong and negative perception of people with Jewish descent has been adopted by the European Parliament Working Group on Antisemitism. 62. In 2010, a similar definition that avoided using the word wrong was adopted by the United States Department of State. 63. In 2014, that definition ways adopted in the Operational Hate Crime Guidance of the UK College of Policing. 64. And was also adopted by the Campaign Against Antisemitism. 65. In 2016, the U.S. State Department definition was adopted with International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. 66, 67. The working definition of antisemitism is among the most controversial documents related to opposition to antisemitism, and critics argue that it has been used to censor criticism of Israel. 68. Evolution of usage. In 1879, Wilhelm Marr founded the Antisemitic League, Antisemitic League. 69. Identification with antisemitism and as an antisemite was politically advantageous in Europe during the late 19th century. For example, Karl Luger, the popular mayor of Findesical Vienna, skillfully exploited antisemitism as a way of channeling public discontent to his political advantage. 70. In its 1910 obituary of Luger, the New York Times notes that Luger was chairman of the Christian Social Union of the Parliament and of the Anti-Semitic Union of the Diet of Lower Austria. 71. In 1895, a Sikhuser organized the Alliance Antisemitique Universal in Bucharest. In the period before World War II, when animosity towards Jews was far more commonplace, it was not uncommon for a person, an organization, or a political party to self-identify as an antisemite or antisemitic. The early Zionist pioneer Leon Pinsker, a professional physician, preferred the clinical-sounding term Judeophobia to antisemitism, which he regarded as a misnomer. The word Judeophobia first appeared in his pamphlet Auto-Emancipation published anonymously in German in September, 1882, where it was described as an irrational fear or hatred of Jews. According to Pinska, this irrational fear was an inherited predisposition. 72. 1889 Paris, France elections post a four self-described candidate antisemite Adolphe Willet. The Jews are a different race, hostile to or own. Judaism. There is theonomy. See file for complete translation. Judeophobia is a form of demonopathy, with the distinction that the Jewish ghost has become known to the whole race of mankind, not merely to certain races. Judeophobia is a psychic disorder. As a psychic disorder, it is hereditary, and as a disease transmitted for 2,000 years, it is incurable. Thus have Judaism and Jew hatred passed through history for centuries as inseparable companions. Having garnalized Judeophobia as a hereditary form of demonopathy, peculiar to the human race, armed represented Jew hatred as based upon an inherited aberration of the human mind, we must draw the important conclusion, that we must give up contending against these hostile impulses just as we give up contending against every other inherited predisposition. 73. In the aftermath of the Kristallnacht pogrom in 1938, German propaganda minister Goebbels announced, the German people is anti-Semitic. It has no desire to have its rights restricted or to be provoked in the future by parasites of the Jewish race. 74. After 1945 victory of the Allies over Nazi Germany, and particularly after the full extent of the Nazi genocide against the Jews became known, the term antisemitism acquired pejorative connotations. This marked a full circle shift in usage, from an era just decades earlier when Jew was used as a pejorative term. 
75, 76, Yehuda Baal wrote in 1984, there are no anti-Semites in the world. Nobody says, I am anti-Semitic. You cannot after Hitler. The word has gone out of fashion. 77, Eternalism Contextualism Debate. The study of anti-Semitism has become politically controversial because of differing interpretations of the Holocaust and the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. 78. There are two competing views of anti-Semitism eternalism and contextualism. 79. The eternalist view sees anti-Semitism as separate from other forms of racism and prejudice and an exceptionalist. Trump's historical force teleologically culminating in the Holocaust. 79, 80, Hannah Arendt criticized this approach, writing that it provoked the uncomfortable question, why the Jews of all people, with the question begging reply, eternal hostility. 81, Zionist thinkers and antisemites draw different conclusions from what they perceive as the eternal hatred of Jews, according to antisemites. It proves the inferiority of Jews, while for Zionists it means that Jews need their own state as a refuge. 82, 83. Most Zionists do not believe that antisemitism can be combated with education or other means. 82. The contextual approach treats antisemitism as a type of racism and focuses on the historical context in which hatred of Jews emerges. 84. Some. Contextualists restrict the use of antisemitism to refer exclusively to the era of modern racism, treating anti-Judaism as a separate phenomenon. 85. Historian David Engel has challenged the project to define antisemitism, arguing that it essentializes Jewish history as one of persecution and discrimination. 86. Engel argues that the term antisemitism is not useful in historical analysis because it implies that there are links between anti-Jewish prejudices expressed in different contexts, without evidence of such a connection. 81. Manifestations. Jews, identified by the mandatory Jewish badge and Jewish hat, being burned. Antisemitism manifests itself in a variety of ways. René Connick mentions social antisemitism, economic antisemitism, religious antisemitism, and political antisemitism as examples. Koenig points out that these different forms demonstrate that the origins of antisemitic prejudices are rooted in different historical periods. Connick asserts that differences in the chronology of different antisemitic prejudices and the irregular distribution of such prejudices over different segments of the population create serious difficulties in the definition of the different kinds of antisemitism. 87. These difficulties may contribute to the existence of different taxonomies that have been developed to categorize the forms of antisemitism. The forms identified are substantially the same, it is primarily the number of forms and their definitions that differ. Bernard Lazari identifies three forms of antisemitism, Christian antisemitism, economic antisemitism, and ethnologic antisemitism. 88. William Brustein names four categories, religious, racial, economic, and political. 89. The Roman Catholic historian Edward Flannery distinguished four varieties of antisemitism sad smiley 90, political and economic antisemitism, giving as example Cicero, 91, and Charles Lindbergh winking sad smiley 92. Theological or religious antisemitism, also called traditional antisemitism, 93, and sometimes known as anti-Judaism winking sad smiley 94. Nationalistic antisemitism, citing Voltaire and other Enlightenment thinkers, who attack Jews for supposedly having certain characteristics, such as greed and arrogance, and for observing customs such as Kashrut and Shabbat winking sad smiley 95. Racial antisemitism, with its extreme form resulting in the Holocaust by the Nazis. 96. Louis Harrop separates economic antisemitism and merges political and nationalistic antisemitism into ideological antisemitism. 
Harrop also adds a category of social antisemitism. 98. Religious, Jew as Christ killer. Economic, Jew as banker, usurer, money obsessed. Social, Jew as social inferior, pushy, vulgar, therefore excluded from personal contact. Racist, Jews as an inferior race. Ideological, Jews regarded as subversive or revolutionary. Cultural, Jews regarded as undermining the moral and structural fiber of civilization.